Question number 10. Order. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister and ask, does he stand by all his statements? Right hon. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes, like the one that the OCR is 3.5%, the unemployment rate is 5.7%, the current account deficit is approximately 2.6% and the current inflation rate is approximately 0.8% and printing money is a really bad idea. <laughs> Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does he stand by his statement that, quote, we are a fair minded people and tackling climate change requires global action? And as a responsible international citizen, New Zealand should stand up and be counted? Oh, no, right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary, Supplementary question, Dr. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does he accept the findings of the latest report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which stated that current climate change projections mean there will be a likely increase in both global mean tropical cyclone maximum wind speeds and precipitation rates, or to put it in plain English, that climate change leads to more intense and stronger cyclones? Right hon. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I think the balance of scientific opinion would support the view that climate change can lead to uh, greater um, climatic conditions like cyclones, but I would just caution the member uh, that there is no evidence to support that cyclone PAM is a consequence of climate change. It's simply mere speculation that he would suggest it is if he is doing that. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Russell Norman. Does he accept the findings of climate scientist Dr Nick Klingerman, who said, and I quote, in a warmer world, combination of rising sea levels and more intense tropical cyclones may increase the damage caused by any individual cyclone? Right, hon. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, could the member just repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah, I can ask Mate. the yeah. Dr Russell Norman, supplementary question. Thank you. Does, does he accept the findings of climate scientist Dr Nick Klingerman, who said, and I quote, in a warmer world, the combination of rising sea levels and more intense tropical cyclones may increase the damage caused by any individual cyclone? Right, hon. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I haven't seen those particular reports. As I said earlier, uh, I think it's well accepted, actually, that uh, climate change, uh, if it uh, continues to, to become a more and more significant issue, has environmental impacts. So that's why New Zealand takes its responsibilities seriously. It's why we have an emissions trading scheme. It's why we're investing heavily in science. It's why we'll be taking a responsible target to Paris. Mr Speaker, we're a small country, but we do our bit. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Russell Norman. By how much have New Zealand's net greenhouse gas emissions increased since he's been in government? Uh, right hon. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, despite the uh, misinformation that the member has out, been out there saying, uh, the advice I have is that New Zealand's total emissions now are 3% lower than they were at their peak in 2005, that New Zealand's net emissions are about at the same level as they were in 2007. Mr Speaker, a national-led government is doing a pretty good job in this area. Point of order. Point of order. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, I thank the Prime Minister for his answer. But order, can question, I just have the point of order, please? The question was about since he's been in government, not since any of those other dates. It's about since the Prime Minister has been no, the Prime Minister. No, no, no. It's not about designing an answer to satisfy the order, to satisfy the members as answering the question. The question was asked. The, the, without doubt, the Prime Minister has addressed the question. Now, that's not to the satisfaction of the member. The way forward is to ask further insightful questions. Supplementary. Supplementary questions, Dr Russell Norman. In light of the fact that New Zealand's net greenhouse gas emissions have increased by 20 per cent since the Prime Minister has been in office, which is a simple fact, Order, does just... he think that his government has been a good Pacific neighbour and a responsible international citizen? Quite honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, um, I think the member has been ex extremely selective with the truth, uh, and his facts are incorrect. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr. Russell Norman. Does the Prime Minister then deny that from 2008 to 2012, according to the official statistics from his government, 
New Zealand's net greenhouse gas emissions have increased by 20 per cent. Speaker, on the, on Prime the advice Minister. I've had, the, uh, the misinformation that the member is putting out is literally that misinformation. He's been selected with the truth. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Ross Norman. In light of the fact that the Prime Minister does not know what the net greenhouse gas emissions are under his government, does he believe he's being a responsible... Order, order. A point of order from the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Mr Speaker, you've just um, uh, uh, reprimanded the questioner for his expectation that he should be able to design an answer to a question, but then allow him to say that given he didn't get the designer answer that he wanted, that means the Prime Minister doesn't know. That's a completely unreasonable uh, approach and quite outside of standing orders. Yeah. Well, speaking order. to the point of order, Mr Speaker. Well, I will hear from Dr Russell. Mr please. Speaker, the reason why I did that was that the Prime Minister has been accusing me repeatedly of misleading, and I am not. I'm simply stating the facts. Order. 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 That doesn't mean that the member then has the right to defy standing orders, which means that an a supplementary question should be concise and it should not contain imputations and everything. I did allow the question through. I was probably very generous to the member to allow the question through, but a question like that then gives very wide licence to the Minister, in this case the Prime Minister, when he comes to answer the question. Now, the member would make more progress, as I pointed out to him earlier, by trying to make his questions more concise and then I can outsist him to try and get the answers he may be hoping for. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Russell Norman. Does he believe that New Zealand has been a good Pacific neighbour and a responsible international citizen in light of the fact that since he has been Prime Minister of New Zealand, New Zealand's net greenhouse gas emissions have increased by 20 per cent according to the statistics from his government? Speaker, um, in terms of the latter part of the question, I reject the member's suggestion. In terms of the former part of the question, actually New Zealand's been a very good Pacific neighbour. The member may remember uh, that it was under the leadership of a national-led government that we hosted uh, the Renewable Energy Conference here in New Zealand, where we've been investing heavily in ensuring that Pacific neighbours actually are no longer reliant on the importation of fossil fuels, and that over time they'll have a variety of options, but most likely to be solar and wind available to them, uh, to stop the importation. New Zealand's been doing the same things for instance since down in Antarctica. So, Mr Speaker, New Zealand's been investing extremely heavily in research when it comes to agriculture. And, in fact, uh, the government is on track not only to meet its 2008 to 2012 commitment to reduce net emissions, emissions to the 1990 levels, but we're actually on track to achieve the objective of reducing emissions further to a minimum of minus 5 per cent. And, yes, we are. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In light of that answer, is he surprised then to find that Ministry for the Environment in their official projections show that New Zealand's net greenhouse gas emissions will increase by 48% in just 10 years, according to the report from his own government? Speaker. Right, Honourable Mr. Prime Minister. Speaker, uh, that's assuming no other action. It's one of the reasons why the government's been investing heavily. I mean, the member uh, is aware of the fact that over half of New Zealand's emissions come from agriculture. If the member's suggesting that New Zealand destocks and shoots animals and reduces its world food supply, then he's welcome to do that. But that is one of his more daft ideas, but at least it would have some idea about the economy, because any of the people who want to replace him don't order, even know order. what the cash that's rate is. That's not going to help the order of the House. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Russell Norman. Is he even aware of the comments from the President of Kiribati, Enote Tong, who said of climate change and its effect on the Pacific yesterday that it is, quote, a catastrophe that impinges on our rights and on our survival into the future? And will he take action to actually reduce New Zealand's emissions in light of those comments? Speaker, right, Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, I'm well and truly aware of the President of Kiribati's uh, comments. I've had numerous discussions and been involved in numerous meetings with him. And, Mr Speaker, the government can be proud of the actions it's taking when it comes to climate change. On this side of the House, we actually stick to the facts and we know what climate change is. On that side of the House, they don't even know what the official cash rate is. That's right. Point of order. Point of order. Dr. Russell Norman. I seek leave to table a research paper from the Parliamentary Library showing net emissions have increased 20 per cent under this government. Well, if it's a research paper that's prepared for by the Parliament, it's, it's then available. It wasn't specifically appeared, uh, uh, 
I'll, I'll get the it, member to clarify it. It was specifically prepared on my request. Okay, on that basis, I'll, oh, sorry. On that basis I'll put the lead, the uh, uh, source from the parliamentary library, the effects of climate change, any objection to it being tabled? There is none. Point of order. Mr Speaker, I seek leave to, uh, to table a report that shows the official cash rate is 3.5%, the unemployment rate is 5.7%, current account deficit order. is 26 No. All that information is freely available. To point of order. <coughs> order. 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 It's a different order. point of order. Order. And it is a point of order. It's, I wish yeah, to it's a different point of order. Mr Speaker, I seek leave to table a report that shows that 90% uh, of New Zealand children are not going without lunch. That's right. Order. And, and again, I think that's a political matter. It's not going to be helped by the tabling of any report. Question number 11, Simon O'Connor.